This video was very kindly sponsored by Skillshare. Hey everyone, it's Serica, and today I am going to show you how I film my videos from start to finish. I've tried several different ways to record videos, and this is my smoothest process so far. It's not perfect, but it's working well enough for me right now. It's been quite a while since I did a video like this. A lot has changed, and I get so many questions about this topic, so let's get right into it. I always start with a plan. Here's a look at the planning page for this very video that you're watching. On the left side, I have a checklist of everything that I need to do for a single YouTube video. This doesn't change very much from video to video. In the middle, I plan out each section of the video, and this eventually becomes my script. I've gotten a little better at sounding less scripted when I record, but when I really want to sound more casual, I'll make an outline with bullet points instead of typing everything out. On the right, I plan out the corresponding visuals, which is what I want the video to show during my voiceover. I use the Sony a7 III with a 24mm f1.4 G Master lens as my main camera. This is a pretty recent upgrade, and I did months of research before I decided to invest so much money into this setup. I chose it because it is a full frame camera with the ability to record 4K video. This is considered a pro level camera, so it's definitely not vital for those who are just starting out. Prior to getting the Sony a7 III, I was using an entry level DSLR camera, which was the Canon Rebel T5i and a 50mm f1.8 lens. I used the Canon T5i for many years, and I still think it's a great camera, even though it's around 8 years old. My earliest videos were filmed with an iPhone 7, and in fact, I am recording parts of this video with an iPhone XR. No matter which camera you decide to use, it can be challenging to get a good overhead shot. I've tried many tripods, but my favorite is the ArcScan table clamp mount. It's meant to be mounted to a tabletop like the name states, but my desk is way too thick for the mount, so I secured it upside down on the wall shelf above my desk. Honestly, it would be much sturdier on a tabletop, but the shelf is attached with anchor screws, so it should hold. If you have a tabletop that's thinner than 1.75 inches, I highly recommend this table clamp mount. It's great quality and my camera does not budge when I'm using it. As for camera settings, these are the exact settings I'm using to record this video, but sometimes I change the aperture or ISO depending on the light source that I'm using. I learned a lot about my camera from Jason Vong, and I'll link their channel below because it has a wealth of information about Sony cameras. A huge game changer has been using a dummy battery instead of a regular battery. This is basically an adapter which allows you to plug in your camera to a power source so that you don't have to worry about your battery running out in the middle of recording. I run the wire along this arm stand where it's plugged into a surge protector on my shelf. Try searching for dummy battery or power adapter for your specific camera model. I use the SanDisk Extreme Pro 128GB memory card because sometimes I record 4K video. I have two of them just in case one doesn't work or I run out of space and it's always nice to have a backup. I prefer to use natural light whenever possible, but recently I decided to rig up an artificial light source so that I have more opportunities to record videos. I find myself working at night a lot more now, and since my schedule is already restricted with being a mom, I don't want to be restricted by the time of day that I can record. With this 12-inch ring light, I can record videos anytime I want instead of having to wait for the right conditions. It's also nice to have a consistent light source for time-lapse videos. Sometimes natural light can be tricky to work with as the sun moves across the sky and it moves behind a cloud. I repurposed this newer microphone arm stand and I added a mount adapter to put my ring light around my camera. I attached it to my IKEA shelf and since it's light, it is pretty secure. This is one of the cheaper ring lights that I came across. It has three different temperatures and a dimmer. 
I use it on the brightest white setting when I record at night. As you can see here, I have a microphone attached to my camera. This is the Taxstar shotgun mic, which is a cheaper alternative to a road mic. I have it just in case I want to record a vlog or I'm speaking directly to the camera. I can also use it if I don't want to put a voiceover on my video and just capture the sounds of whatever I'm working on. Speaking of voiceovers, I am currently using a blue snowball mic to record this. I've tried to improve the audio quality with a universal shock mount and a pop filter to reduce plosives. In some of my older videos, I simply used my earphone mic and my phone to record voiceovers. Honestly, anything is better than the microphone on my camera. To record at other angles, I used the tripod that came with my ring light. Since I am right-handed, I placed the camera on my left in order to get a good side view. For panovers, I hold my camera as steadily as I can and record at 120 frames per second instead of 24 frames per second so that I can slow down the footage and make it smoother when I'm editing the video. After filming and recording a voiceover, the work is only half done. Next comes editing. I use Adobe Premiere Pro on a Mac. My favorite tutorial about editing is from Mango Street Labs. My workflow is very similar, so I'll link the video below. I love their tutorials, by the way, and I've learned so much about photography and videography from them. While recording is my favorite part, editing is my least favorite part. However, I have learned to like it more than I used to. The more shortcuts I learn, the easier it gets, so check out the tutorial I mentioned if editing is a challenge for you. It takes me anywhere from 5 to 10 hours to edit a video, depending on the type of video it is, how many cuts I need to make, the length of the video, etc. In the past, I have recorded tons of footage and never got around to editing it because I ran out of time and now the moment has passed. That doesn't really happen anymore because I have made a huge effort to improve my editing skills. Speaking of skills, this video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to level up your creativity. The classes cover everything from drawing, painting, photography, digital art, and any other creative pursuit that you can think of. There are also classes on how to shoot and edit videos. I recently took YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKPHD, taught by Marquez Brownlee. If you have ever searched on YouTube for a tech review, you've probably come across an MKPHD video. Marquez takes us through the entire process of creating a YouTube video, from planning to filming to editing. It was really inspiring to find out how much quicker his workflow is compared to mine, and I gained some insight into how I can streamline my own process so that I can work smarter, not harder, especially when it comes to editing. This class is for anyone who wants to create content. It doesn't have to be about tech or art. It can be anything, as long as you're passionate about it. The first thousand people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. I always breathe a sigh of relief after I finish editing because the rest of the steps fall into place very quickly. I drop in some background music from Epidemic Sound, which is a paid site, but you can also get free music from YouTube's audio library. I create a thumbnail in Photoshop and then it's time to upload. While the video is uploading, I'll add the description, closed captioning, end screen, and fill in all of the details that YouTube requires. So that is how I make a video from start to finish. There is a lot that goes on behind the scenes, and it does take some time and effort. I started out years ago by balancing my phone on a selfie stick, which was really unstable, but it worked. I have acquired all of this stuff over many years. I hope this was helpful and that I answered most of your questions about my process. I'll see you all next time for another video. Bye.